Hello everyone, my name is James Bold, lead news anchor and reporter for First Coast Weather and News. Today, we will be discussing the current climate crisis that is affecting the world. Over the past few years, the heating of the earth has led to more frequent and devastating weather events around the world. From more severe weather outbreaks, stronger hurricanes, more frequent floods, and much more intense fire seasons, millions of people have had to pay the price with their property, their comfort, and their lives. Many climate scientists have claimed that we are running out of time to change the course of our planet, and that this drastic heating will only begin to intensify over the next few decades. Some argue that it's already too late, and that we have already doomed ourselves. But I personally believe that telling people that is a dangerous notion. I think there is always time for change, and telling people there is no hope left will only lead to complacency, nothing will get done. In addition to that, making the common citizen shoulder the burden of handling global warming is not only irresponsible, but it is shifting the blame away from who truly deserves it. Reports say that as little as 100 corporations are responsible for 70% of the greenhouse gas emissions on this planet. Treating the situation as the common person's fault is a complete fallacy. The real blame should be aimed at these corporations who are carelessly ruining the planet we live on. As a nation, we need to push for accountability on these corporations, and pressure the government to force changes. The clock is ticking on our planet and we need to take action now. Anyway, on to our next story, discussing the ruthless wildfire season in the West. Joseph, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up? I haven't seen you at work for the past few days. Did you get sick or something? Nah, man. It's a lot more than that. I just haven't been really feeling the outside world for a while. Do you want to talk about it? You aren't usually like this. I can't help and feel like the world is doomed. All we hear about on the news is that it's too late to stop heating up the planet, or how there's constant weather catastrophes every few days. Really, what does the, that mean for all of us down the line? Joseph, you can't keep overthinking this stuff. I know it's scary, but we have a long time before we actually have to face that. Why not try and enjoy the life you have now? It's hard to enjoy life when there's always the threat of a hopeless future. How am I supposed to live knowing we could lose everything in just a decade or two, or even the blink of an eye? You're overthinking it, man. As unfortunate as it is to say it, there's not much the average person can do. I don't think you understand. That doesn't help to hear. Whatever, dude. I'll just figure it out. This message is being broadcast at the request of the National Weather Service office in Tallahassee, Florida. A tornado warning has been issued for the counties of Bay and Gulf in Florida until 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. At 3.08 p.m. local time, Doppler radar indicated a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado. This powerful storm was located around 10 miles to the west of Panama City, Florida, moving eastward at 35 miles per hour. Locations impacted include, but are not limited to, Rosemary Beach, Sunnyside, Panama City, Wetapo, and Callaway. Residents in the path of this dangerous storm are being urged to get indoors immediately and remain on the lowest floor of a sturdy structure. Stay away from all windows and do not go outside until the storm has cleared the area. While a tornado has not been confirmed with this storm, Doppler radar has indicated strong rotation within this storm. Take cover now, flying debris will likely cause severe damage to property. If you are in a mobile home or outdoors, move to the closest substantial shelter immediately. Repeating, a tornado warning has been issued for the counties of Bay and Gulf in Florida until 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Bold, lead news anchor and reporter for First Coast Weather and News. Today, we will be discussing an ongoing situation in the Florida Panhandle. 
A week ago today, a tornado hit downtown Panama City, an area that has still been trying to rebuild from Hurricane Michael, which impacted the area nearly three years ago. Michael was a Category 5 hurricane, and it laid waste to much of the Florida panhandle. The National Weather Service had determined that the September 2 tornado was an EF3, with winds estimated to clock in at around 155 miles per hour. Thankfully, reports of injuries and fatalities have been relatively low. Though, there has been extensive damage to property. Though, a situation has been developing even after the fact. Major gas companies in the area have been reporting gasoline shortages after the storm had passed, due to disruptions in deliveries. As a result of these shortages, prices have jumped drastically from where they usually are at this time of the year. Many residents have called this price gouging, which is illegal for companies or merchants to do in a time of emergency. But gas and oil companies in the area claim that they are simply adjusting prices in response to supply and demand. Many residents and even industry whistleblowers have claimed that this is simply not true, and that these companies are doing this to hoard more money, while charging people more. In response to this ongoing conflict, the state of Florida is planning to investigate these supposed fraudulent claims soon. For the time being, residents will likely just have to deal with the inflated prices until a decision is made. On to our next story, discussing the impacts of global warming on tropical development. Hello? Joseph? What's up, man? The same as usual. Just watching the world go to hell. Aw, oh, come on, man. You're being dramatic now. You may see it that way, but I don't. Look at this shit that's been happening down in Panama City. The manipulation by major corporations should be straight up illegal, but no one's really stopping them. The government is saying that they're going to look into it, but they're dragging their feet. The price of gas has been rising all around the area, and I can barely, I barely have the money to pay for it. Let alone the fact that, you know, gasoline is killing our environment anyway, but like, you know, we do what we gotta do to get around in this world. Joseph, relax man, it's gonna be okay. This is just a minor hiccup. Things will be back to normal soon. I don't think so, Mark. Corporations have been taking advantage of the population for way too long. They like to prey on people when they are at their lowest and they aim for the weak. I think it's time someone puts them back in their place. I don't like that tone, dude. What are you thinking? It's nothing of your concern. Just know, you'll probably see me on the news within the next couple of days. Alrighty, so we're going to be entering Panama City in around 30 minutes now. Consider these recordings as a sort of manifesto of sorts. One that won't be published until after what will likely be my capture or my death. I am here to make a statement for when this is found. The government and major corporations should really watch where they're going to tread in the coming years, or you'll end up with just more bastards like me. Get ready, you're gonna be in for a show in just a few short hours. Hello sir, thank you for stopping in today. Uh, can I help you with anything? Yes, you can actually. Sir, what the hell are you doing? Please, for your sake, leave this building. I do not want to hurt you or anyone else in here. Please, just leave. And take any customers or other staff with you. Get everyone out of the parking lot. You have five minutes. Go now. And do not try and call the police. Why are you doing this? This is highly illegal. Look, dude, do you want to die for this company that's probably paying you minimum wage? Or do you want to live and save the lives of countless others around you? Come on, I'm giving you a chance here. I really don't want you to be hurt, but if I have to, I will. Now please, one last time, leave the store now. I don't exactly know what you plan on doing, but alright. Leave your hands up as you go out. Don't try anything funny. Believe me, I don't want to. You're right, I don't know why I'd risk my life for this place. <laughs> That's the spirit. Now please evacuate anyone outside. There's going to be a show here soon. All right, let's get to work.
This message is being broadcast at the request of the Bay County Police Department. A law enforcement warning has been issued for Panama City, Florida, until further notice. At around 2.15 p.m. local time, a robbery was observed to be taking place at the Panama City CNG station along Avery Street and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, north of downtown Panama City. Information on the suspect is limited and conflicting, due to the lack of civilian reports. CCTV camera footage was able to discern some details of the suspect. The suspect seems to be of average build, white, average height, and was seen wearing a pair of blue jeans, a black t-shirt, and a black ski mask. The man was seen holding some type of handgun. The man was also seen pulling into and leaving the station in a green Jeep Wrangler. If you have any information on this man and his whereabouts, please contact your local law enforcement agency immediately. Repeating, a law enforcement warning has been issued for Panama City, Florida, until further notice. This message is being broadcast at the request of civil authorities within Bay County, Florida. A local area emergency has been issued for Panama City, Florida, until further notice. At around 2.30 p.m. local time, a large explosion was reported at the Panama City CNG station. Residents in the area are being asked to remain away from the site of the explosion. Do not attempt to go near or attempt to observe this event as doing so could put you at risk for severe injury or death. If you are within a three-block radius of the gas CNG station, remain indoors, unless told otherwise by local authorities or law enforcement. Move any vehicles you have off of the road, in order to let law enforcement and fire vehicles pass. Stay tuned to local news media for more information and future updates on this event. everyone got out of there on time would really hate for someone to be hurt there that didn't have anything to do with the situation i could just call it here but this is just the beginning i want to create a mess so big that the government has to respond and if they want to respond they're gonna have to come and find me i'm going to keep going until there's nothing left i'll burn this damn city to the ground if i have to if it means that a brighter future can be ensured for the ones that will follow us then again, when has this country ever cared enough to make meaningful change? I'll tell you when. When they are forced to. And that is exactly what I plan on doing today. I want my intentions to be clearly known, and I do not want my motives to be twisted. You know exactly why I'm doing this. Do not get it twisted when I am gone. This is an emergency update. This message is being broadcast at the request of the Bay County Police Department. This emergency update is being transmitted in relation to a developing situation within Panama City, Florida. As of 3.25 p.m. local time, there have been reports that three more gas stations have been intentionally sabotaged and blown up. It has been reported that a man has been going around, placing explosives at these gas stations, and blowing them up after they have been evacuated. The man does not seem to be trying to hurt any individuals. Rather, the suspect seems to just be targeting property. Residents are being urged to remain away from any gas stations in the area and be on the lookout for a green Jeep Wrangler. This is believed to be the vehicle that the suspect is traveling in. If you live or work close to any gas stations in the area, it is recommended that you shelter in place. Stay tuned to local news media for more information and future updates on this event. This has been an emergency update. Thank you for your time.
This message is being broadcast at the request of civil authorities within Bay County, Florida. A shelter-in-place order has been issued for the Panama City area, until further notice. The situation within Panama City has only worsened, with around six gas stations being compromised and blown up within the city in the past two hours. The Florida state government is now labeling this a domestic terrorist event. This is a particularly dangerous situation. Residents within a quarter mile of any gas stations in the area are advised to leave the area immediately and seek shelter elsewhere. If you are not near any gas stations, it is advised you also remain indoors and stay away from windows and doors. Do not answer the door for anyone other than law enforcement. Do not go outdoors until an all-clear is given. Law enforcement is currently working to apprehend the masked individual who has committed these acts of domestic terrorism. Stay off the roads, as this is critical for law enforcement to maneuver throughout the area. Do not try to apprehend the individual, as you will be putting your life in serious danger. Repeating, do not go outdoors until an all-clear is given. Stay tuned to local news media for more information and future updates on this event. Repeating, a shelter-in-place order has been issued for the Panama City area, until further notice. This message is being broadcast at the request of the Bay County Department of Emergency Services. An industrial fire warning has been issued for eastern Panama City, until further notice. At around 4.05 p.m. local time, a large explosion was reported at the Ware Oil and Supply Company building that is along Northeast Avenue. It is believed that this explosion is in relation to the ongoing domestic terrorism threat within Panama City. Reports have come in that the station exploded into a large fireball, and that multiple injuries and fatalities are likely. Residents are being urged to avoid Northeast Avenue for the time being. The Panama City Fire Department is currently en route to the demolished building to attempt to put out the fire. Please remain away from the site of the explosion until the situation is resolved. Stay tuned to local news media for more information and future updates on this event. Repeating, an industrial fire warning has been issued for eastern Panama City, until further notice. This message is being broadcast at the request of civil authorities within Bay County, Florida. A civil danger warning has been issued for the city of Panama City, Florida, until further notice. Over the past hour and a half, there have been numerous reports of fires starting around the Panama City area. It is believed that there has been so much gasoline leakage in the streets due to the destroyed gas stations that even small sparks or moderate heat could lead to further explosions or fires. Residents are advised to turn off all heating systems indoors and outside of your house. Do not use any items outdoors that could cause a spark, such as cigarettes, grills, lighters, or any other device capable of producing a burst of heat. If a fire is to spark at a location near you, contact emergency services immediately. Stay tuned to local news media for more information and future updates on this event. All right, looks like we're about done here. Over a dozen stations were ruined. Hopefully no one was hurt. I hope when these tapes are published, the public knows I never wanted to harm anyone other than the major corporations. I really do hope that this is a wake-up call to the government and to the major corporations. If you don't clean up your act real quick, people like me are only going to become more and more common. If you will not listen when we call for action, for when we protest, or when we try to pass laws, Eventually, force will be the only option that's left for us to use. The clock is ticking, America. It's time to go.
This message is being broadcast at the request of the Bay County Police Department. This is an emergency update. The following message will contain information regarding a recent emergency that has been underway within the Panama City area. Please stand by for further details. The domestic terrorist that has been wreaking havoc in the area was reported dead on the outskirts of the Chevron Products Co. building in southern Panama City. The suspect has been identified by only his first name of Joseph. His body has been recovered, and his vehicles and home will be searched over the coming days. Residents in the area are still being advised to remain indoors, and are being urged to not use any objects that can cause a burst of heat, such as lighters outdoors. Due to gas leaks in the area from the terrorist attacks, high concentrations of natural gas have been reported in the air. Any burst of heat could potentially spark the gasoline, causing a large fire or explosion. Cleanup crews are currently en route to assess the situation and to clean up the spills in the area. Stay tuned to local news media for more information and future updates on this event. This has been an emergency message. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone, my name is James Bold, lead news anchor and reporter for First Coast Weather and News. Today, we will be discussing an awful situation that happened over in the panhandle of Florida, specifically in Panama City. Yesterday afternoon, a man who has only been identified by his first name of Joseph, went on a rampage throughout the Panama City area. The Florida state government is labeling this event as a domestic terrorist attack, but the way in which Joseph went about his attack was very unusual. Witnesses reported that the man repeatedly said he did not want to harm any innocent civilians or bystanders, and his main goal was taking on major gasoline and oil companies. Over the course of a few hours, he managed to blow up a dozen gas stations, an oil refinery, and a natural gas refinery on the coastline. While the exact device he used to cause these explosions is unknown, it was reported that he had been using some type of remote-controlled explosive device. Many have theorized that this man was an eco-terrorist. What is that you may ask? An eco-terrorist is essentially someone that commits acts against the environment or against the people that are ruining the environment, in an effort to try and force policy and legislation changes that would benefit the environment. A close friend of Joseph, whose identity will not be revealed for privacy's sake, claimed that Joseph had been acting erratically in the days leading up to the attack. He seemed very apathetic and hateful of what the world had become, environmentally speaking. So while nothing has been confirmed yet, the eco-terrorism theory seems to be a solid one. But did he really incite any meaningful change? It has been reported that oil has begun leaking into the coastal waterways along the Gulf Coast, risking the lives of the animals and people that live along the coast. In the short term, it looks as if Joseph has caused more damage than what was already occurring to the planet. But in the long term, an attack on this scale could potentially convince legislation to be pushed that would help protect the environment. Many believe that eco-terrorism could see a rise in the near future due to the worsening conditions that this planet has been facing for the past few years. Whether these acts will actually incite any meaningful change is yet to be seen. I guess we will just have to wait and see what the future holds. This has been your afternoon report from First Coast Weather and News. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you have a good rest of your day.